Hello YouTube, I'm David Frankel. And I'm Duncan Friedberg. And we're at Berry Metrolink stock. What are we doing today, Duncan? Well, we've been filming the history of a Metrolink, which would have been uploaded by the time you're watching this. So we thought, as a fun side project, we'll film this. So, inspired by Jeff Tick and Londonist, we bring you Secrets of the Metrolink. Let's go. So we're starting today at Berry Bolton Street, the original terminus of the Berry Line. But there have never been any trams here, obviously, so how can this be the terminus of the Berry Line? And as a matter of fact, this doesn't look much like a terminus at all. That's because the Berry, Altrincham and most of the Alderman Rochdale lines, which are now part of the Metrolink network, are converted railway lines. The Berry Line terminus was moved from here to the current terminus in 1980. But, before the Beeching Axe, the line used to continue all the way to Rawtonstall, Bakeup and Accrington. Part of the line up to Rawtonstall is now part of the East Lancashire Heritage Railway. If you've seen some of my videos, you'll have probably already seen the junction between the Metrolink and the former line towards Bolton Street. But here it is again anyway. <laughs> And here's the other end of that short section of line, viewed from a train on the East Lancashire Railway. So there's plenty of railway history to see between Bury and Radcliffe, but there's also some of Metrolink's future. There are two proposed stations between Bury and Radcliffe, these are Bury South and Elton Reservoir. Oh, and Bury South might not actually be Bury South, it might be called Buckley Wells instead. So I'm at Radcliffe Station, except you and I both know this is not the actual Radcliffe Station. No, this is Radcliffe Bridge, Radcliffe's first station on the line from Clifton to Bury, which predates the Cheatham Hill route, which would later become the Metrolink. What is now Radcliffe Station was originally opened as Radcliffe Central, whilst Radcliffe Bridge closed in 1958. Unfortunately, what remains of the railway line has been covered by this road. Ugh. Oh, and there are two other disused railway stations nearby as well. One is Ainsworth Road on the now disused line to Bolton, and one is Withings Lane on what is now the Metrolink, though no trace of either remains today. Peaton Park, like many converted stations on the Metrolink, used to have a station building. Now it's just this funny concrete little square. which is currently being rebuilt, there is another one of these funny squares where a station building used to be. Up until about half a year ago, this was a footbridge that went across the track, and at the end of the footbridge there used to be an abandoned lift shaft, though this has now been demolished. If you're wondering what the lifts at Crumpsall were like, just take a look at these at Heaton Park, they're still in use. One stop that does still have an intact station building on the other hand is Trafford Bar, although you can't go inside. We have come to Lynn's Road, a disused station and one of the only stations to close since the start of a Metrolink. Not like Withens Lane which was on this line but closed before the Metrolink started. It has been replaced by two stations Queen's Road and Abraham Moss, which have both opened since 2010. I got off once. For old timey's sake. Here's the site of the former Woodlands Road stop, as seen from a passing tram. Queen's Road was officially added to the network in 2013, but prior to the construction of a full stop, there was a small staff-only stop where trams would stop to allow the drivers to change. It used to look like this. After Queen's Road, we joined the Rochdale line.
And if you watch Queen's Road Depot, it curves away and seems to keep going. That's because the tip of the depot follows the western half of the old Cheatham Hill Loop, which we see again as we arrive at Victoria. There it is. Then, if you head up the Rochdale line, you see it again. But where is it? Oh, we're on it. What is now the start of the Rochdale line is on the old Cheatham Hill Loop. When the Oldham Loop Line was a national rail line, it separated here at Newton Heath, but the Metrolink uses the Loop Line itself in order to serve Monsell and Central Park. Which, by the way, was built seven years early. The striking station roof was built as part of a planned interchange here. But the opening of the Metrolink extension was pushed back till 2012. So the stop was used for art exhibitions and installations until it opened. The rest of the interchange was never even finished. reminds me of Navigation Road because its layout is a sign that Metrolink and Network Rail just can't share. Network Rail need to use this line in order to access the Greater Manchester Waste Disposal Facility. And this wasn't a problem whilst this was a national rail station. But Metrolink and Network Rail tracks have to be separate for legal reasons. So that track is used by Network Rail and this track is used by the Metrolink. Fun fact, the railway station that was here at Newton Heath and Mostyn before the conversion to Metrolink was known as Dean Lane. Ellsworth and Westwood, the Metrolink takes a very sharp turn indeed, which is strange because Heavy Rail doesn't really do that. In fact, this doesn't look much like Heavy Rail at all. And also, why does this suspiciously look like an abandoned junction? That's because the Rochdale line is the converted Oldham loop line mostly. Here at Oldham, however, the Metrolink leaves the loop line in order to run along the streets, serving Westwood, King Street, Central and Mumps. That leaves this little bit of an abandoned track which the trams don't touch. I'm here at Oldham Mumps. Well, not THE Oldham Mumps. Well, it is THE Oldham Mumps, but it's not the current Oldham Mumps. It's the original Oldham Mumps. This is one of Oldham's two original stations, the other being Werneth, which closed when the line was converted to Metrolink. Oldham Mumps was then used as a temporary terminus, then a temporary through station, since the line onto Shore and then Rochdale was opened before the town centre extension was complete. Actually, I lied to you. Oldham had a third station, Oldham Central, roughly halfway between Mumps and Werneth, which closed in the 1960s, so there were three. Actually, I lied again, there were five. The other two, Clegg Street and Glodwick Road, were on the Ashton and Oldham Joint Railway, which ran roughly parallel to the Oldham Loop through Oldham Town Centre, but it was closed under the Beeching Axe. When the Oldham Town Centre extension opened, the temporary Oldham Mumps was closed and the new Oldham Mumps, the stop behind me, was opened. When the railway passed through here, it crossed Oldham Way on a bridge. When the old route through Oldham was converted for temporary use by trams, this bridge was removed and the trams crossed Oldham Way at street level. Just outside the new Oldham Mumps stop, you can still see these temporary tracks buried into the road. 
If you're ever heading all the way up to Rochdale, you might notice that you seem to enter Rochdale from the wrong side. Also, look out for the remains of a small piece of track which once carried trains from the Oldham Loop into Rochdale. The new Victoria stop is the only stop on the Metrolink to have a track flanked by two platforms, meaning it has four platforms but only three tracks. Since January 2018, the middle track has served as the starting point for trams towards Manchester Airport. Prior to the rebuilding, which started in 2009, Victoria had only one island platform, plus a third northbound-only platform which fell out of use soon after it was opened, being barred off with a white boarding. This was where the platform was located. So I'm standing on the spot of High Street Metrolink stop. So trams from Bury towards Ultrigham and Piccadilly used to stop here at a southbound only platform until Market Street was pedestrianised and then Market Street, which handled northbound only trams, was rebuilt to allow trams in both directions and High Street closed. Shoot Hill, on the other hand, wasn't added to the network until 2003. Here is the third of Metrolink's three former stations, Moseley Street, which closed in 2013. It was the last bi-level platform on the network, which created a major bottleneck as double M5000s could not be used through this section. But removing Moseley Street created a small problem as the next Altrincham tram could depart from either Market Street or Piccadilly Gardens. So how did passengers know where to go? Well, after closing Moseley Street, Metrolink installed this sign, which shows where the next tram to Altrincham departs from. Oh, and Bosley Street was also southbound only. It was the very last unidirectional stop on the network. So I'm here at Deansgate Castlefield. Deansgate Castlefield, having been recently rebuilt, um, was originally added to the Metrolink network at the same time as the rest of the, the first phase opened in 1992. However, the viaduct we are on now has actually been around for a lot longer. So one of the people don't know is that the Deansgate Castle Street Metrolink stop is built on what was the approaching section to one of Manchester's lost termini, which is just round the corner and is now the Manchester Central Exhibition Centre. This was once a railway station and it was massive. Another fun fact, the Manchester Central Exhibition Centre used to be called the GMEX Centre and Deansgate Castlefield Metrolink stop when it first opened was called GMEX until it was renamed in 2010. Deansgate Castlefield was rebuilt, finishing in 2015 as part of the Second City Crossing project. Here's what the stop used to look like. So when DTA was remodelled, this bridge also went under remodelling. David thought it was a new bridge added when they remodelled the whole stop. I beg to differ. Basic, what the hell am I saying? As it actually turns out, this is the old bridge just with all the glass panes taken out. Instead, they put this really nice new glass and this walkway in its place. Deansgate Castlefield provides interchange with Deansgate Railway Station across the bridge, which was originally called Knott Mill. Now, this is not really a secret, but I can't not point this out. When they rebuilt De Deansgate in 2015, one of the greatest things they added was this fantastic nature wall. Not so long ago, St Peter's Square was actually rebuilt. And a fun fact for you, there's actually a time capsule hidden in St Peter's Square, and we found it over here. is also the only Metrolink stop with four actual platforms. Whilst Victoria has four platforms, two of the platforms share a track, while St Peter's Square is the only one to have four platforms with four separate tracks. And as a small fact, the memorial was actually moved halfway across St Peter's Square so they could build the new Metrolink stop. Bonus fun fact, St Peter's Square is one of the only two stations on the Metrolink to have been fully rebuilt twice. The other one is Market Street. Here I am at Exchange Square, the newest stop on the network. This is near the site where in 1996 a bomb went off that was planted by the IRA which destroyed many of the buildings. But we'll find out more about that in part two. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.
Here I am at Cornbrook, one of the busiest stations on the Metrolink, although very few people actually exit or enter here. So here we are at Old Trafford, oh, sorry, Exchange Quay. So if you hop on a northbound tram from Furswood to Trafford Bar, you can see where that tunnel used to continue. There's the terminus, but you might notice that the line seems to keep on going. Spooky.